Hey guys, welcome to the instructions for how to complete the competition in Aquatic Ecosystems uh, activity. Um, this one is uh, kind of fun. Hope you enjoy it. You are going to have to do a little research, but this is probably, I think, this is the last activity we're going to do this year. Uh, it may not be, so don't hold me to it, but I, th I think it is. I was looking ahead. Um, in this activity, you're going to develop a model of the flow of energy in an aquatic eco ecosystem and show how an environmental change affects competition of resources. Um, we'll start out here with this idea that from microscopic cyanobacteria, that's these little blue-green algae, all the way up to gigantic whales, aquatic ecosystems are home to many beautiful and unusual organisms. I mean, this is a pretty picture, right? I mean, look at all the, look at the different diversity there. This thing's just teeming, and all these are part of a food web, okay? This eats that, and that eats this, and this decomposes into that, and then somewhere there's blue-green algae that they all eat, and something big comes along and eats it, but you know how that works, right? Aquatic ecosystems provide many valuable resources for humans, not just that it's pretty, not just that it helps to control um, oxygen levels on the earth and all kinds of things, but we eat from this. Um, we get all kinds of resources from this. Natural changes in human activities have deteriorated these ecosystems over the years. The exploitation, the exploitation, the exploitation, I don't think they spelled that right, maybe they did, of resources, pollution, oil spills, natural disasters, they affect these ecosystems and the organisms living in them. In this activity, <clears throat> we're going to build a food web for an ecosystem, an aquatic ecosystem, and we're going to use your model to explain how natural changes in human activities can change competition in an ecosystem. You remember food webs, okay? Remember that food webs always start with producers. That's these guys right here. They take sunlight energy and they turn it into sugars. We talked about photosynthesis like crazy. And um, then something eats them, then something eats them, then something eats that, and something eats that. And you get these things called top predators. Don't forget, every single thing up here eventually goes to the decomposer level. And the decomposers take the nutrients that are tied up in here, release them back into the soil or whatever the, the substrate is. Um, and in, in this case, it would be water. And then the process starts all over. And um, remember, we've got your producers, your first level consumers, your second level, third level, fourth level. Some organisms can be in both levels, like the round goby. It can be a second or third level consumer. Um, you got omnivores, carnivores, um, all kinds of things going on here. Um, herbivores. But um, remember how food webs work, okay? Uh, yeah, and we go all the way up to your high-level consumers. Now, remember, these high-level consumers, these fourth-level consumers, really sometimes even the third-level consumers, but they're usually fourth-level consumers, they are your top predators, like this shark. <coughs> okay, and the thing is, is it takes so many third-level consumers to keep the shark alive. It takes so many second-level consumers to keep one third level alive. So how many second level does it take to keep the fourth level alive? And you keep going back down all the way to producer level, and it takes a huge number of producers to keep a fourth level alive, which is why we don't have the oceans full of sharks. Okay, there are predators, and there's only a few per you know cubic kilometer out in the ocean, or actually probably hundreds of cubic kilometers. And so um, they're higher up on the food chain. It takes a lot of the producer level to maintain a fourth level uh, consumer. And you know some ecosystems even have five, six, seven, eight levels, just depending. But if it if it can maintain seven or eight levels of ecosystems or of consumers, then it's a very robust, very energy rich, very nutrient rich ecosystem. Um, there are some, like the taiga and the tundra uh, near the poles, that can only have second and a very few third level eco uh, consumers. Okay, but we're talking about aquatic ecosystems here, and your fourth level is usually a shark or something like that. Big, great, big, scary thing. Um, arrows are important features in food webs. Directional arrows indicate the direction of energy flow. The arrows start with the producers at the bottom and kind of draw their way through. Um, I you, you're going to have to create a food web as part of this activity and you need to be able to draw these arrows and the energy always goes f away from the producer level towards the top consumer level so we're talking about how energy flows through this lion gets its energy from this cat this cat gets its energy from the mouse the mouse gets its energy from the plant so the energy flowed through the mouse through the cat and to the lion and you need to be able to show that with any kind of a drawing that you produce so the instructions here are pretty straightforward. You need a paper, a pen, or a pencil. 
maybe a word processing software graphic design but you can you you can should be able to just do it right here but um, begin by selecting a freshwater or marine aquatic ecosystem if you can't think of anything else or don't want to get too creative just use Lake Okeechobee or the Kissimmee River um, be specific choose a specific lake or if you choose an ocean identifies geographical area and depth I would encourage you not well you know what maybe do an ocean uh, or Lake Okeechobee you're gonna have to do a little bit of research on it what are its geographical features what's its temperature what's its depth and light availability what's its salinity okay it could be salt water it could be fresh water it could be somewhere in between what's its pH usually does it have a high pH usually they don't um, but they could some other unique features such as what kind of body water bodies of water flow into it what flows out of it any unusual chemistry any weird climate does it get cold does it get really warm like the Lake Okeechobee does um, I'll even let you read about Lake Erie. Uh, so if you want to pause this and take a look at it, you'll see what we're looking for as an answer. It's just now you can't do Lake Erie. So if you do Lake Erie, I'm giving you a zero, right? Okay. But pause this and read it. You'll get an idea of what we're looking for as an answer here. In part B, uh, conduct some research, produce, identify two to three producer species, two to three primary, two to three secondary, two to three tertiary, and one to two quaternary species that live in your aquatic ecosystem, and then write them down. And uh, here's another example. In the Lake Erie ecosystem, you got your blue-green algae, green algae and diatoms. Uh, then you got your can water fleas, mollusks, and zebra mussels as your consumers. You got your yellow perch, ground goby, and rainbow smelt as secondary, walleye and smallmouth bass as tertiary, and finally you got the big, great, big old Lake Erie water snake, which just that four words together scares the bejesus out of me, and now I'm never going to go to Lake Erie. Anyway, just write those down. That's all you got to do for part B is research them and write them down. Part C is where you're going to have to do some drawing. Okay, the Lake Erie water snake. My God, what a horrible thing. Anyway. Using the organisms you identified in Part B, create a food web for the ecosystem. Use this sample food web for reference if you need to, and then just draw it out. Now, you can, I would say the easiest thing for you guys to do is just be draw it on a piece of paper, color it a little bit, take a picture and submit that here. <coughs> but uh, if you want to, you can use um, Google Draw or something and create it. But, you know, here's what I'm looking for. Pretty straightforward, nothing difficult. Make sure you draw your arrows. That's important. Make sure you label, okay? And then uh, that's all you got to do. And in Part D, changes in ecosystems can be attributed to natural causes such as natural disasters, seasonal variations in climate, currents, and tidal activity. Many of these changes can affect the amount of food resources available in an ecosystem. Research one natural change that currently affects or could affect the aquatic ecosystem you choose. Use your food web model to explain how this change can affect the competition of food resources in your aquatic ecosystem. And then you can read this if you like. Now, if you choose Lake Okeechobee, for example, you could talk about pollution coming into the lake. You could talk about a hurricane. You could talk about... I don't know anything but draw me out a scenario just write me several sentences explaining a scenario that changes um, the lake or whatever you've chosen right now that was the natural these were natural causes okay um, so pollution wouldn't fit here but like a hurricane or like a, like a, um, uh, I don't know like a tsunami or something but something like that you gotta write that down um, but in part E, I want you to explain a human activity, and that's it. So part D is a natural occurrence, like a hurricane. Hurricane has a huge effect on Lake Okeechobee. And part E would be um, a man-made effect, like like pollution. All right, And that's it. Once you get that done, you have completed the entire project, and you will be getting full credit. All right, why are you sitting there? Get to work.